Hey guys, this is MGamers, also known as Femship in the modding scene. I'm the developer of ME3 Tweaks, uh, and as well as Mod Maker and all that stuff. Uh, I'm also the current maintainer of the single player controller support mod, which I will be showing you how to set up today if you have literally no idea what you're doing. Um, before we do this, there's a couple of prerequisites. You'll need to download Java, which you can get off java.com. It doesn't matter which version you get as long as it's higher, it's 8 update 30 or higher. And you need .NET 4.5, which comes on Windows 10 automatically and can be downloaded for free. I think through Windows Update, actually, on most recent versions of Windows. So, we'll also need to download Mod Manager and the mod itself. This is for if you want to play single player with a controller. So, what you need to do is you need to go to my site and click on this little button right here. And I'm going to middle click and open mods in the background and open mod manager in the foreground. And what you need to do is you need to go down here and click on download mod manager from my site. And it will download a little zip file and extract that onto your desktop. And additionally, while that's going, you can go to SP native controller support and download from mega.nz or nexus mods. Um, you will need to use some modern browser if you want to use Mega. Uh, Mega is a lot faster than downloading from Nexus mods, but it's up to you what you want to do. Uh, once those are downloaded, I put them both on my desktop. I have a slightly old version of SP Controller Support, uh, 1.072, the latest is 1.074. And Mod Manager, I extracted into a folder named Mod Manager. So we'll open up Mod Manager. Uh, we have a data folder where stuff in the background for mod managers just kind of goes. You won't really need to ever go in here unless I pretty much tell you to. Um, you have the mods folder, which is where mods will go, but we haven't got there yet. And then you have the executable itself, which will run. Uh, the first thing you'll see is mod manager will ask you if you can keep it up to date. Yes, because this mod is actively updated, you will need to choose the yes for that. Uh, the next thing you need to do is you need to make sure that the bio game directory is set correctly. Uh, on most systems this will automatically be detected, but on some it won't for unknown reasons. Uh, if it isn't set properly, you'll get a bunch of error messages that come up and block you from doing just about anything. So what you need to do is you need to go to wherever Mass Effect 3 is installed, which is typically under Origin Games. Uh, the default is C Program Files x86 or program files if you're on 32-bit. Um, Origin Games, Mass Effect 3. I'll go there and I'm looking for the folder named Biogame. Select Biogame Directory. Open. And it will say save this path. Yes. And it will automatically save that for you and it will load that every time you start Mod Manager. So you don't need to ever set that again. The next step is we want to back up some DLCs. Um, for this mod specifically you need to back up Test Patch. Um, this won't need to be done. These will automatically be backed up as the mod tries to install, but it's just better to do it beforehand. Um, if you're doing um, Mod Maker and maybe some single player modding with other mods, you might want to consider backing all these up. These will only back up if they are already original, so make sure your game is in the vanilla Mass Effect 3 state or they will fail. So we'll just back up these three small ones. It'll go really fast. All right. So our DLCs are backed up. I've already got the other ones backed up for this instance, but you should back them up if you need to. So we also need to update Game Repair Database. This essentially, you create database. What this will do is it will create a hash map of files and sizes for Mass Effect 3. So say I installed a texture mod, like a lot, and now I want to install the controller mod on top of that. What I need to do is I need to create this game repair database with a lot already installed. It will catalog my game installation with a lot installed. And as files are replaced from a lot, it will back up the files from a lot and say, hey, these are the ones I want to restore. Instead of like, essentially the, same, the way um, Origin does this is it points to the original game files and the mod manager will point towards whatever it was when you update this game database. It's pretty confusing, it's very technical on the back end, but for the most part, you click the button 
generate it once and you won't have to do this again. This should take only a few minutes. Uh, when it gets to about 80%, it's just going to fly through this. Um, once we've done these two steps that we've just done, this will be pretty much the only time you ever have to do that. Um, if you want to get help, you can go to like forums and the help menu. These menus here are dynamically updated from my server. So if there's a big issue, I will be listing it in here. You can view the FAQ to make mods. You can copy the log to clipboard. If you have issues with this mod, click this button and then click this button and it will tell you how to contact me. All right, so this is done. We'll close that. The next step is we want to make sure we have a DLC authorizer installed. By default, when you install a mod, the mod manager will use launch WV. So when you click start game, it'll launch something that will launch Mass Effect 3. And that thing that was originally launched will patch Mass Effect 3 as a process and it will make it so modified DLC loads. Uh, an alternative to that is if we install W32 right here, it will install a file that will automatically force modified DLC to load. It's more reliable, but if you restore origin, if you restore the game via origin, it does not survive. And so that's why I default to launch WV. So for this instance, we'll click that. All right, let's install that was easy. You may need to be an administrator, or you need you may need to run Mass Effect 3 mod manager as an administrator if it's having issues installing that file. So the next step is we need to go to mod management, import mod, import mod from 7 z And what we're gonna do is we're gonna browse to our desktop where that file was at the beginning. Right here. Open that. And it will take a few seconds to scan through this 7-zip, which is actually about one gigabyte. And it will find the mods inside of it, which should be only one. All right. So we click on it. We can see the description. This is the same one that will be our mod manager once it's imported. Uh, it'll help you figure out if you want to import it or not. Wait, we'll check the box. Uh, when you click on it to view the description, it unchecks the box. It's just a bug in Java. It's really annoying. Click import and it will decompress it into the mods folder, which we can see right here. And it will continuously extract until it's done. It takes a few seconds. All right, it's been imported. Hit OK, reloads, it sees the mod. So before we go any farther, um, we should see an update, yes. There's an update from 1.072 to 1.074. Click yes, it will download the update and apply it. So we can see these date stamps just changed a little bit. Click on this, scroll to the bottom, 1.074. Now, before I talk about what we're about to do, every update that comes through Mod Manager will reset the mod to its original state from the server. So if you have made changes such as using variants, adding mixins, um, let's see, changing the graphics settings, you have to reset those, but they're pretty easy to do. I'm gonna show you how to do them right here. Um, by default, Mass Effect 3 does not scale text on PC. It, on consoles, it actually didn't either because it was just set to a single resolution. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to GUI Options folder in the Mod folder, and we're going to hit Set Text Scaling. And what you need to do is if you're not using 1920 by 1080, you need to pick your resolution from the list. Um, if your resolution is not listed, just send me a thing on my forum, and I will try to make one for you. They're not too hard to make. But what this does is it will scale the text up to the proper size and have the proper offset from the dialog wheel so they don't overlap. Otherwise, you might have some humongous font on a tiny screen and it looks ridiculous. 
So for this example, I'm using 1366 by 768. Just put in the number four to pick that option. And it tells me I need to run auto talk. But before I do that, I am also using Genesis 2, which means I need to click install Genesis 2 fix. So what I need to do is turn on Genesis 2 fix, type in Y. Genesis 2 fix is a DLC for Genesis 2. If you have Genesis 2 but you don't install this, Genesis 2 just won't be available, but you won't notice it very much unless you're just starting the game. All right, so now we have installed the Genesis 2 fix. We've backed up our DLCs. We've set the GUI options. We need to go to Mod Utils, run Auto Talk on this mod. This is required. That is a very important step, or the game will just kind of hang. All right, now we're ready. Now we just hit Apply Mod. All right, and now the mod's installed. Um, when updates come in, they're applied to mods in Mod Manager, not installed mods. So you need to make sure you restore your game and then apply the mod. Uh, but to do that, you go to like Custom Restore, and I can click on this button. It'll restore that, and then I click on Restore Base Game Files. And it does that, and then I go over here, Restore Custom DLC Manager, and I can see DLC Con Xbox, which is the controller support mod, and I delete that. And now it's ready to install the next update. So if we were doing it, that's how you would do it. Now we just start game. And the game will launch in a sec. Let me grab my Xbox controller. We we'll hit start. Press start on the controller. see the boxes are scaled up a little bit uh, everything's scaled up essentially for Xbox because they designed it for a TV still looks pretty good though Damn, it's getting pretty late here all right so I can use the controller sticks to do this uh, one thing you may consider is going to the options, going into the controller. You may want to consider turning up your sensitivity. Um, these don't actually work. I need to actually remove these. Don't bother with these. You need to use a controller mapper to fix these. Um, and some of these settings will default to the wrong even though they're set to the right. Like it'll say camera sensitivity is high, but it'll be listed as medium. So that's just something you should know about. So, uh, where do we want to play? Let's just uh, start here. Alright, so, uh, the differences are you can't use controllers, or you can't use the keyboard, I don't think, anymore doesn't work for just about everything. So if I hold the right bumper, the power wheel comes up, I can use the left stick. You have to keep it held. Uh, I can use the left stick and navigate around. Uh, I can map with X, Y, and B. And that will be mapped to LB tap, right B tap, and Y. Control data run. You can see the text is bigger. Lieutenant, but keep your weapon handy. <laughs> Always. How do you know where I am? You ready to go? Oh, hi. As you can see, the dialogue wheel has been scaled up. That was quite a bit of work, actually, to get it to work. Tell me more about this company. Arlac means Eye of Wrath. We are named after the fierce T'Chanka son, Reed. We were sent. All right, let's get going. Finally. Right behind you, Shepard. If you hold LB, you will open up the weapon wheel. Uh, if you hold X, you will change guns. If you hold R, you will shoot. If you hold L, you will aim. You can dodge, 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 
dodge. Uh, we'll play this a little bit. How do I trigger this? Come on, Shepard. It's not that much. Everyone all right? Shepard! You in one piece? Looks like we're all okay. Keep in radio contact. On our way. All right. Um, we'll go to squad. As you can see, we have all the Xbox buttons. We're trying to do a good job porting these over. Uh, I don't have anything I can upgrade. Something up ahead. I see it. Click the right stick. Click Roger. the left stick. I, I see the scout here. the uh been dead a few days. Yeah. Shut up, Shepard. So I click the left stick, Jump the uh, hint comes up. Looks like it. Stay sharp, people. Agreed. Everybody be ready. Here's our first battle. Uh, if you're having this is the first time you ever played a controller, you'll suck. I sure did. Uh, aim assist is on by default. I can show you in a sec how to turn that off. Just something over there. We save James. All right, so we save. So, just for me being faster, I'm just gonna open the console and very dangerous. And type exit. Now close the game. So we'll open Mod Manager back up. So say I don't want to have controller vibration. I go to mod utils, variants, disable controller vibration. Um, or if I don't want aim assist. I don't know if enable settings really does anything right now. You might not need to use that. So these are mutually exclusive. So if I want to disable controller vibration, I click that. It disables controller vibration in the mod. And say I'm like, oh, I want no aim assist. I click that. It's going to turn off the disable controller vibration. If I get enough requests, I'll merge these two into one. And if you want to go back to the original version, you do that. And that's about it. Uh, when a mod updates, it'll erase all those little tweaks that we did. So you'll need to add, like, add your variant or like turn on Genesis 2 again, all that kind of stuff. Once you get past the intro to Genesis 2, I don't think you actually need to install the fix. So it's only if you're actually starting a brand new game. Um... That's about it. Let me know if this was helpful. Please give it a like and share if it will help you with... I don't know. I'm tired. Let me sleep. Please.